The 2023 Baylor basketball season is dead. And that means it's time for football. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor, and thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. I'm Drake Toll from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears, and it is officially football season. Now, we've talked a lot about basketball this week. We'll continue to talk about basketball throughout the offseason. Today is Friday, March 24th. It is uh, pretty much officially the offseason. We'll do some conversations, to be transparent. We'll do some conversations about baseball. They've won a series. We'll do some conversations about football. But right now, football softball we'll do some conversations about acrobatics and tumbling we'll do it but right now i am focused on the top three storylines and things to watch out for this offseason in football spring ball has started dave aranda has spoken to the media you'll hear from him later on in the show and i am ready i am amped give give me more football we live in texas that is what this state is for that is what i came to baylor for because i love i love the game and it's time. The guys have hit the practice field. Media has talked to the coaches. And already, guys like TJ Franklin have stepped up into big roles and been big-time leaders. You're seeing Matt Jones coming back with a defense next year, which gets me excited. Richard Reese, Dominic Richardson on the offensive end. There's so many names that have question marks beside them, guys that played well, that didn't play well last season, that are new to the program. But my number one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, not even going to do it backwards. I'm going to start my number one. Number one. Storyline to watch for. The biggest thing to keep your eye on this spring in football far away is the quarterback competition. For the second straight year, Baylor has a QB battle. Take you back to this time last year, March 24th last year. We were wondering, is it Gary Bohannon? Is it Blake Shapin? We had no idea. The middle of a, a quarterback battle that most of us had decided, Travis Roeder came on the show. I said it. Every guest who came on the show said it. Pretty much a given Gary Bohannon's going to still be the starting quarterback. That didn't happen. Instead, it was Blake Shapin, the six-foot quarterback, 200 pounds out of Shreveport, Louisiana. What did he do last season? He was 48th in America in passing yards, 2,790 of those. 55th in touchdown passes with 18, tied for 91st in interceptions with 10, and had a QBR 73rd in America at 57.1. Let's be honest with ourselves. I like Blake. I think Blake's a good kid, and I think he's a good leader. I think he might have just won over this team over the course of the last year despite bad play. And if that's the case, he's your QB. However, let's be straight up about it. He had a bad year. He didn't do very well. He didn't look confident. He didn't make big plays. I I, I, I didn't see from Blake Shapin, something where I thought, oh, yeah, I can't wait to see him play quarterback for Baylor next season. There was never a moment where you're like, all right, he's just, he's this close. He's almost got it. No, there really wasn't that trajectory. By the end of the year, it was, oh, please. I mean, you you know, you saw this. It was, oh, please, anybody else. Put Kyron in, who is now gone. Put Luke Anthony in. Put somebody else in. That's not Blake Shapin. I don't know if you remember the Air Force game in the Armed Forces Bowl, but that was just terrible. Like, yes, negative 15 degrees. That was bad. But the QB play was terrible. Now he's got somebody vying with him in Sawyer Robertson. Find this interesting. Before we completely get into the Sawyer Robertson, Blake Shapin conversation, I, at least one of you is like, what about that RJ Martinez guy? He seemed kind of good. RJ Martinez, far and away the most experienced quarterback on the roster. Played a ton at Northern Arizona University. Had like 400 passing attempts last season. He is He has got... A lot of reps in this whole football thing. He will not touch the field. They talked to Dave in the press conference. I thought it was so funny. They talked to Dave in the press conference, um, which again, we'll hear in a second. And he mentions the quarterback battle. And he's like, yeah, you know, I think um, that Blake pushes uh, Sawyer and Sawyer and Blake both um, are two guys. Uh, appreciate the question that could uh, really go far for us and um, really do, you know, one's here and he moves here. Um, and so we feel like if we get both of those guys to um, to play where they want to be, that uh, they can they can make you know each other. It's a car and it goes, and then a, um, a little bit. And you know if the car goes, then the car is going to be there. And if the car is not there, then we're not going to have that. So yeah. And that to me just explains that great impression. Just explains that RJ Martinez will not be will not be in the rotation of the starting uh, of the starting 
three, I said starting three, starting five for basketball season. Uh, it will not be the rotation of the guys competing for the starting spot. Maybe like he's, you know, a dark horse guy that you don't count on and he wins over the team. But I, I think right now it's between Blake Shapin and Sawyer Robertson. Shapin did not have a great year last year. Sawyer Robertson has never had a great year of college football because he hasn't really played. Um, his best game last season was against Bowling Green, three for four, 11 yards. He had a uh, long of seven yards. He was sacked once. Um, he had his, that's his high point, his low point, two for six against East Tennessee State University, two for six for five yards and an interception. So that's what we have based to everything to base on. He has zero yards rushing on two carries in his career as well. So now you have two guys, one inexperienced, who was a great record out, recruit out of high school from Lubbock Coronado in Sawyer Robertson. Another guy really experienced in Big 12 play in Blake Shapin, who just wasn't very good in Big 12 play. What do you go with? That's what the spring's about, baby. That's why it's number one, the quarterback battle. Which one of those guys is it going to be? I got my dog. I've got my dog. I'm not going to say who yet. I've got my dog. I talked recently to an NFL scout, a guy who worked at Alabama for a while, a guy who worked in the Patriots organization, works that does a lot of work with TB12. And you know what he told me? He'd probably listen to this podcast right now. You know what he told me? He said the starting quarterback, he said, I know who the starting quarterback for Baylor is next season. I know. He said it's the guy who wins the locker room. Whoever steps in and everybody just assimilates this kid's style or thinks he's the leader of the team, that's the guy that's going to be the starting quarterback for Baylor next season. Is that Sawyer Robertson? Is that Blake Shapin? It's not going to be R.J. Martinez. It's one of the other two. Kyron Drones is gone. Somebody's got to step up and win the team over. Now, how do you do that? That's a tough question. Do you become boisterous? Do you buy the offensive line lunch? I saw that Blake went out to lunch, uh, went out to dinner with the O line pretty recently at George's. I think that's awesome. I don't think there's any ploys to win over the team. I think it's got to happen organically. It's got to happen naturally. You are just a leader, and these guys follow you. But I told you this a while ago. The last time I saw these two guys in action, Blake and and Sawyer, was at a special needs football event, and the entire team rallied around Blake. They said we need a QB to help QB this event, and they all said Blake. If he wins over that locker room, it's his battle, whether we like it or not. And he might just come out next year and be insane. He just needs a massive offseason. He needs a Max Duggan offseason. Sean Bell puts you through the program, builds you up, and make him a an all-Big 12 caliber quarterback, which when's the last time Baylor had a first-team all-Big 12 caliber quarterback? It has not been since the he-who-should-not-be-named era that that has to change. Baylor was QBU there for a little bit and was pumping out guys who were we won a Heisman. So now you want to get back to that? Is shaping the best guy to do that? Is Sawyer Robertson the best guy to do that? That is number one on my list this offseason of things that I'm looking for, things that I need from Baylor football. Figure out your damn quarterback. Tell me who it's going to be, and he better be good. You got two options on the team. One of them better be good. You know what's great? Fan duel. It's better than good. It's great. It's great. The tournament's heating up. NCAA March Madness right now. America's number one sports book is FanDuel. Every new customer is going to know Sweat First Bet. That is right. $1,000. You know what I would do with if I had $1,000? What would I do with $1,000? I don't know, ma'am. I don't. I really don't know. I would probably go to a concert. Um, I don't usually get $1,000. You know, that's a lot for a college kid. I would probably buy a lot more of these. That's a plug. Um, fanduel.com forward slash locked on will give you a thousand dollars in free play if your first bet doesn't hit. If your first bet does hit, congrats, you just won a thousand dollars. If it doesn't hit, well, then great, you just won a thousand dollars in free play. That's bonus bets back if you don't win. That's fanduel.com forward slash locked on. Sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. They can then you can wager on everything from the money lines to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net in March. That's right, you got futures on that. Go UConn, they may have won, they may have lost last night. I'm recording the show in the middle of the game. That's all on an app that is safe, secure, super easy to use. Don't miss it right now. Fanduel.com forward slash Locked on, make every moment more with FanDuel. All right, my number two, my second biggest point of this offseason and where Baylor football needs to focus. I gotta know, gotta know now who is gonna be the running back for this team. Now, there are questions about the secondary, there are questions about the offensive line, obviously, and those are gonna be huge storylines. Yes, but I want to know who's gonna roll out as the starting quarterback next season. On roster, listed on roster right now, according to the Baylor website, Bryson Washington, true freshman. Richard Reese, a true sophomore. Quaylen Jones, a redshirt senior. Jacoby Clark, a redshirt senior. Jordan Jenkins, a redshirt sophomore. And Dominic Richardson, a true junior. Who of these guys is going to start for Baylor at running back next year? 
I know what a lot of you are thinking. This is an easy, easy decision. It's Richard Reese. Five foot nine, 175, plays way bigger than that, was way better than that. The product out of Belleville was a stud. Second best freshman running back in America last year. Not so fast, my friend. I'm calling it right now on Friday, March 24th. He will not be the starting running back for Baylor University when they roll out in their first game next season against Utah or Long Island or whoever it is. I forget which one it is. He will not be the starting running back. Right now, I think the starting RB, the guy who's going to take the, the handoffs from Sawyer Robertson or Blake Shapin, will be Dominic Richardson, six foot tall, 207 pound junior out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and a transfer from Oklahoma State. I I have talked to people within the program. And remember, sources within the program have typically been pretty reliable here. I have talked to people within the program that think he is the guy, that he is of this running back room, that like a dominant force. Watching his tape, if you go watch what it did at Oklahoma State, I think, compared to the other people on roster, that Dominic Richardson is the guy. I am circling at number two. Who is the running back? How does it stack up? I got Dominic Richardson, Richardson at one. I expect shared carries, almost the same amount of carries. This is a weird thing to say, but I really think this is true. I think the, I expect the same amount of carries out of sophomore Richard Reese as redshirt senior Quaylen Jones. Again, you're probably thinking, no, Reese should get way more. Maybe he should, but they overused Richard Reese last season. I can't imagine how banged up that poor kid was. Not to say that he's not completely well-rested and 100% now. It's been months. Yeah, you're exactly right. It will have been months by the time the football season gets here. But they used the heck out of him this past season. They're not going to do that again. I foresee them going to Quaylen Jones, Richard Reese, not on first down. Put those guys in short yardage, third down situation, whereas your bell cow, your A1 guy, if Dominic Richardson gets 20 carries in a game, then Richard Reese gets 10 and, and Quaylen Jones gets 10. I think that's how this is going to shake out next year. Instead of games where Richard Reese got like 36 carries last year. You can't sustain that. That's like when Larry Fedora would make Charlie Brewer throw the ball 53 times in a game. Larry. Charlie Brewer's your quarterback, who's in town, by the way, for Pro Day. Uh, Charlie Brewer's your quarterback. You can't do that. You have a true freshman running back. You can't do that. You can't make that kid carry the ball 36 times in a game. Uh, so they're going to take the load off of Richard Reese. And I think they're going to put it on Dominic Richardson. From Oklahoma State, he's seasoned. His film is great. In my book, he's the guy to look out for right now to be Baylor's starting running back next season. You're going to see him start for one of the teams in the green and gold game. I'm pretty confident about that. And again, you could fill the offensive line slot. You could fill any, any other position. You could circle here as the position to watch for in the spring. But I put running back there because you have a, an all-Big 12 caliber guy who's returning who I don't know if he'll be your starter. I don't know if he'll be your starter. So that is that is something that I'm monitoring that position specifically over any other because I don't know who's going to start and I don't know the levels of which guys are going to play and in what roles. My third and final thing to watch for this spring starts with an M, ends in at Powledge. Matt Powledge, the new defensive coordinator for Baylor football. He was the co-DC at Oregon following two years of special teams and safeties coaching at Baylor. He's the DC who got here, what, in December? He's been here for three-ish months now. Um, he has been, he's had quite a few stops. He's got some Louisiana ties. He's got Texas ties. The recruiting is going to be there from Powledge. I, here's what I need to see. I need to see Matt Powledge step into a role that completely transforms this Baylor defense because last year's defense was very disappointing. I am looking at, and this segues into a lot of the positions, Matt Jones. What does he end up doing for Baylor next season? What role does he play for this team? Uh, if you remember the, the, okay, the Mike Smith guy who's coming from Liberty, what can he do? Brooks Miller. What can he do? Josh White from LSU. What role is he going to have in this team for this linebacker core? There are not a lot of linebackers in this team that are very well known. Defensive line. We have Gabe Hall. We have Gabe Hall. TJ Franklin, if you want to count him as a D lineman. Okay. Jackie Marshall, those guys. Gabe Hall. What is that going to shake out as? Cornerback, Isaiah Dunson from Miami. We have Isaiah Dunson from Miami. You have a guy named Reggie Bush. Tevin Williams the third is back. What what else? Start naming, start naming secondary guys for Baylor. Alfonso Allen's going to play safety. I'm excited to watch Alfonso Allen play. This is a I don't want to say skeleton crew, but it's a, a group of guys that, gosh, you don't really hear a lot about on the defensive side of the ball. So what is 
what is Matt Palage going to do to take this, I'm not going to say misfit, but interesting, less poppy group of defensive guys, similar to the 2021 team that won the Sugar Bowl, what is he going to do to take this roster and turn it into a Big 12 championship caliber defense? I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of question marks here. You're going to need a damn good coach that comes in and takes those question marks, turns them into exclamation points. Is that Matt Palage? I hope so. But that's my third thing I want to figure out. Is he the guy that can flip this house immediately? Someone has to. The defense was dismal last year. It's what lost Baylor a lot of games. And we blame Jeff Grimes for a ton of stuff that wasn't Jeff Grimes' fault. So coming into this year, those are my three big ones. Number one, quarterback battle. Who's going to win that spot? That's the biggest, that's the biggest question this offseason. I don't, I don't think it can be argued. Two, running back battle. Who's going to be the starter there? Who's going to get the carries? What's that kind of look like for Baylor next season with Dominic Richardson coming in? And number three, Matthew Palich. What can he bring to the defense? What can Matt Palich bring to the defense that completely turns around what happened in 2022? All right. Dave Aranda spoke to the media. It was spectacular. I cut, I cut up the best clips so you can have the best stuff from Dave. Dave, what do you got for us? It's good to see you guys. It's good to see uh, see everybody again. I thought a lot of uh, energy and excitement going into today. You know, um, I know guys were itching to kind of uh, get into football and everything. We spent so much time just in the weight room and, and uh, team development, character development, and all that. And so uh, I think it was on everyone's mind is when the, when the ball is going to start up. And so... Um, there's a bit of a lead-in with football school prior to this and um, some meetings and things and, and um, some work with uh, coaches and players, but, you know, they've been itching for this. Um, you know, the goals for spring for us is going to be, number one, to play hard. And, uh, you know, that's an individual thing. It starts that way. And, uh, you know, I look at the what we put on tape couple years ago and what we put on tape last year and you know there's just so much left to be uh, to be desired from last year and so to start uh, off the way that we want to end up is way important I thought we were able to do that today I you know I think the individual effort it takes to 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 play with uh, uh, to play with the type of fanatical effort we want um, is a decision and I think guys were we're all on the same page with it. And the second thing would be to play together, you know, and I think, you know, the transition from, man, you're in the weight room and you're doing all the stuff, and um, for yourself, a lot of it, right? I'm eating right, gaining weight, I'm losing weight. Uh, you're, you're putting up weight, you know, in the weight room. Um, a lot of times if you hit your max or if you don't, maybe the strict coach knows it. Maybe the, the directly, you know, the guy that's right to your left kind of knows it. And outside of that, you know, the rest of the group that's in there, and then there's f three or four other lifting groups, and they don't know about it, you know? And so there, it, it can be a positive experience, um, you know, winner of just lifting and gaining weight and all that, changing your body. And so you transition from that to this, to where, you know, hey, not everyone's getting reps. There's these 11 are getting reps on this play, or those 11 that are getting reps on that play. And then you go from like, hey man, you know, there's a winner and then there's a loser. And then how do you handle those results? Like, what do you do with them? And I think, um, you know, you have to have the right mindset for that so that um, you can play the next play. And I thought we did that today. We're gonna have to do it for the remainder of all of this because, you know, I think the, the best of us is uh, yet to be seen for sure. A lot of unproven dudes and, uh, you know, we've got as coaches, get the most out of them. And so excited for all the, the, the beginning of it, you know, we'll, um, we'll see kind of this, you know, this particular week, if we're able to kind of keep this type of energy. Um, I know as coaches, we're going to be pushing for it. Take any questions you guys got. Dave, uh, uh, what, what do you see from Sawyer and why did you decide to bring him? Appreciate that. Yes. Well, Sawyer has a great, um, leadership quality he's got there's something about him man like the um you know guys are drawn to him and so he has that leadership quality and um you know whether it is drill work or it's in the weight room 
or it's just watching film. Guys want to watch film with them. Guys want to go work out and push harder and do better with around them, you know. And so um, he's got that quality. I think he is way eager. His effort is is for sure there. And so I think um, you know we're way blessed to have him. I think his best football is way ahead of him. And so you know I'm up there. Um, getting coffee in the morning uh, early, and he pops out of that, that, that little quarterback room at uh, real, really early hours. And so, I mean, he's putting in the work. So excited to see him. Do you expect that to be a, a really good competition then between him and Blake? Yeah, I think they're going to both push each other. I think Blake's had a really good spring. And I think, you know, Blake's one were just his uh, confidence has really grown. And so just him in front of the team, you know, him in a huddle, uh, him after a mistake uh, that a teammate makes, there's just such a difference with all that. And it's, it's what you would like it to be, is the growth that you would want to see. But for us to have it is still good, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. But I think for both of them, uh, their, their aim is the same, and I think their fight's going to improve us. Hey, with, the number, with the number of new coaches, do you have to start slower, or was that what Football 101 was about, trying to kind of get them acclimated to? I know Matt was here before, but brought in two other, I guess. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, um, we, we want to be able to do simple better. You know, I think like those two things, like playing hard and playing together, um, you know, it's, it's easy to say all of that. It's just way, way hard to do. And you think about all the ways that you can get in the way of that. And it's, you know, if you've got, if you've got you know, if you sit back and you're trying to think, okay, who's going to be the, the start in this? Who's going to be the start in that? Who's going to, you can rack your brain right there with some of that, with, with some of the depth that we've got. And so, you know, the danger there is that coaches want to get in the way and kind of fix and, and solve it all with, with plays. And what it really needs to be is uh, the players playing their technique, right? And um, the players asserting themselves. And so I think to keep stuff simple so that that can take place, I think is the first win of spring. And so to continue to do that, and you know, I mean, it's what we need to see is a receiver is pressed and that dude's got to beat the dude across from him and catch a slant or a glance versus press coverage on third and five when it matters a lot. You know, uh, we've got to have a, a, a defender um, through all of our stuff. We show numbers over there, the math's that way. So he's got a one on one. We got to get him to where he can, you know, do his primary rush and beat that, that primary protect. And we need to win that one on one. And so to get those things, those aren't plays necessarily. Those are, those are techniques, and that's confidence, and uh, you know it's a player's game. And so I think the majority of the do simple better is for that. That was Dave Aranda at his press conference talking about uh, there's um, there's some highs and lows, and when we feel like our guys um, step up, and to um, there's the ranking staircase. Uh, it's like a, um, the vehicle move. And if it, if it doesn't move, um, then that's where it stops. And then when we stop, we can't. Thank you, Dave. Um, I, I missed it. I missed hearing from Dave. I really did so that I could do that impression. Uh, this has been an always will be. Thanks for listening. Come back on Monday. We'll talk about football and basketball and stuff and final fours and sweet 16s and whatever's going on on Monday. Baylor, not in it. That sucks. Locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor.